they are releasing a new Series X refresh, which is cylindrical and looks like a router. It's, it's not a box it's anymore. exactly air like purifier. a router. Yeah. Oh, actually, Can I, yeah, that's purifier. my air purifier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it's not a box. It's not a box. I know, it's not an X box. It's, it's the X. X I didn't even <laughs> think of that. No, 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 no. <laughs> that. You can't call it that. That name's taken. You can't call it that. YouTube Red? <laughs> All right, we're cutting that. You can't call it that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That was, that was actually... <laughs> In real time, realizing even... you can't say that. That was hilarious. Intro clip, baby. <laughs> What is going on, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. This week, uh, we've got some banger new features in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Huge. Uh, can't, I can't tell you how excited <laughs> It's been, been so The whole episode, years. that's all we're talking about. <laughs> and that's about. it. That's all we're talking about. 37 no, uh, years. <laughs> Dolly 3 is also out in the wild. Uh, we had an Amazon event this week with a bunch of new products. There's also a whole mess of Xbox leaks. But first, we should just get to uh, some Apple updates because there's some new stuff. The uh, cat's out the bag. We are testing the new stuff now. Some people have published their reviews already. Ours are still in the works by the time this episode comes out. But it's true. I've been testing the iPhone 15 Pro for about, by the time you hear this, about a week, almost a week and a half, two weeks now. Mm. Almost two, like a week and a half, I think. Yeah. Because it was uh, yeah. the beginning of last week. and now. Oh, it's, it's two no, weeks by the time it comes by out. By the time this comes out, it's a week and a half, it was, right? It was Wednesday. Yeah, yeah a, week, a week and, and a half. Me? Yeah, about yeah. yeah. It was Wednesday. Anyway, Tuesday. so that's that. was a also, long week. Apple Watch Series 9. I'm wearing the pink one for you video listeners. You can, uh, <laughs> video viewers, you can see it. For your audio listeners, I'll just tell you I'm wearing a pink watch right now. Nice. Sick band. It's going well. Yeah, I've got the the recycled band. The on. Nike, what do they call that? The Nike Sport Band, Sport right? Band, yeah. And it's, as we mentioned last time, made up of a bunch of flex of a bunch of old recycled sport bands, uh, which is pretty cool. So no two are alike. They're all unique. I just, I'm not over the fact that it's a completely carbon neutral product. And I, I I know we talked about this last time, but I just wanna stress, that's the entire life cycle of the product. So emissions, electricity, energy, materials, construction, packaging, shipping, and then all of the electricity used during the lifetime of the ownership of the device. All of it is what they're claiming is carbon neutral. I need to know how they're doing this. That's so much. It's got to be mostly credits, right? Uh, well, there are some things that are genuinely easier, like instead of using uh, new aluminum, they can use recycled aluminum. And there's a bunch of pieces that they showed me from the housing of the vibration motor to the the outside of this thing, the buttons, it's all like recycled aluminum. That all makes sense. But the then boxing. it's just like, how do you control all of the trucks that it gets delivered on? How do you control all yeah. of the Apple stores that you sell it in that keep the lights on 24 seven? Like how do you control the the grid that I'm plugging my wall brick into that I'm getting electricity from when I charge it? There's, yeah. It's an enormous complex puzzle to like guarantee that it's a carbon neutral product for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. funny because you can't create energy, right? So the idea that if you're charging the device through the life cycle of the product, it's like Talks Apple couldn't create energy out of nothing. Yeah. But they have some sort of credit that they're counting it against. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a very funny note too, where they were like, we managed to fit 25% more Apple watches on each shipment to each Apple store, which, me which means we're using less emissions. And like, that's true. That's great. <laughs> They're also just reducing shipping costs. Sure. Yeah, make the box so, smaller. You know, make everybody it wins. Still win, make it I smaller. Guess. It's still too big. Yeah, I yeah, looked at it. It could big. be half the size of You're what right. it is already. You're 100 percent right. Yeah, but either way, we're we're testing them. I have some early thoughts on the iPhone 14 and sorry, 15 and 15 Pro. As you can tell, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of changes. They yeah. are very similar too to early. the previous phones. The main updates being USB-C. I did have a moment. So I am currently test driving a car for autofocus and I'm gonna shoot that entire video on the iPhone 15, but it's the Polestar 2. And the Polestar 2 has a little, uh, when it got dropped off, it has a little cable in it. It's a, a little wired CarPlay connector because this car has CarPlay. Oh no. And I had that moment 
where I went to plug in the lightning cable no. into the <laughs> iPhone and it didn't work and I was confused for a second and I was like, oh, right. Is it hardwired in? No, it's I can unplug it, but I needed my own USB-C cable. Okay. So already in the car when I dropped it off was the last guy had a USB-C to lightning cable. He just left oh. it there and I went to go plug in the iPhone and it didn't work and I was like, Oh, yeah. I need more USB-C cables. The amount of people that are about to be really confused when they at, they bought the new phone, they ask their friend if they can borrow their charger and it doesn't work and they just don't know why mm. is about to be very high. No, yeah. right? Like It's going to happen. No, it's going to happen. A non-zero amount of people are going to think that something's wrong. I can finally yeah. help my Apple friends. That's true. True. Look at that. People who come over and say, do you have a charger? I and can now Apple, say, in fact, I do. Remember how we were <laughs> trashing on the adapter, though? Mostly because it's thirty dollars. Yeah, which that's is, the yeah, reason. Yeah, that is why we're <laughs> trashing on it. But there is an endless amount of like Ubers with lightning cables sticking out of them, and like accessories yeah. with lightning cables. There, the lightning cables are everywhere. Uh-huh. And so, kind of like we do with thirty pin to lightning, we're gonna have to go through a bit of a, a reckoning again. With all right, there's a wave of new iPhones out there, and none of them can use this port. Yeah. So we better make sure we have USB Type C. I guess they already hopefully also have USB Type C, maybe, but like there's a lot of lightning cables out in the world. At least 30 pin only existed for the first iPhone and the 3G and the 3GS, and then they switched to lightning on the four, right? Is that right? Okay. I think so. So, so yeah, like not that was only like three models. Yeah. This has been many yeah, models. The four what? had no, 30 30 yeah. pin. did it? <laughs> four did. I'm, have 30 I'm, pin. I'm confident now. I oh. remember seeing it. Yeah, it fits the, the silhouette, As but the, maybe four. 4S or 5? As the resident expert of the iPhone 4. <laughs> From trivia, trivia. You're probably right. Yourself. But, yeah, that's, yeah. but it's not a decade, though. You're right. Your wow. point. So like Crazy. 1, 2, 3, and 4 versus 4 to 14. That's a, that's a lot of lightning cables. The 4S switch to lightning? So somewhere in there. No. no. Okay. Was it the five? Must have been. Five. It was the beautifully designed iPhone five. Yeah. Anyway, oh, I, that. I don't want to take up all your time. So it's 10, 10 generations. I'm just fact checking. Yes, iPhone five. Okay. So, so five through fifteen. That's a lot of lightning cables out in the world. Yeah. And uh, all I'm saying is people more are than ten need... generations because they have the S's. Yeah. So they're either going to need <laughs> a lot, a bunch of new lightning cable, a bunch of new USB C cables, or a bunch of adapters. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. And they're so going to make a lot of money on those adapters. You've been on the Max. Yeah. Any camera observations with that 5X? Because I know I'm on the regular Pro, yeah. and I still have a 3X, and it's just early observations before I do my side-by-side on computer testing. Very similar camera yeah. to last year. I I think this is going to be fairly divisive because you go from a 1X main lens, and then you have that 2X, like, basically sensor level crop that is not Mm -hmm. necessarily cropping. It's just kind of using the center pixels. And then from there, all the way to 5X, you're basically doing a digital zoom of sorts. Yeah. So I can, we can maybe throw this in the video. I have this example where I took a 4.9X shot and then a 5X shot and the difference in noise is crazy. (laughs) Yeah. So that's, and I I need to like make a graphic for this, but from 0.5X, to 2x they're the same quality yeah they're the same as each other yeah but once you get to 3x three to five over two uh on this phone so i'm just comparing these to each other okay from three to five this will perform better yes then as soon as you get to five that will perform better. yes so if you do a lot of deeper zooms then anything past five you'll want the max Uh uh-huh but if you don't zoom into 5x all the time then you might find that the max is actually a worse one to get. Yeah. I did notice that once you go past five, though, the quality actually falls apart fairly quickly. Oh, interesting. Like, I'm at 15x right now, and this doesn't look good. Mm. (laughs) It's not great. Yeah, Yeah. Adam looks terrible. Whereas if you look at any... He looks so good. (laughs) Adam looks amazing generally, but he's very noisy in this photo. What do you mean? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's actually... That was funny. Well played. Well played. Um, yeah, any Android phone, not any Android phone, but many Android phones look much better at this than this at this zoom range. Um, so yeah. the 5X lens looks pretty good. I've been doing a lot of testing around Manhattan with the 5X lens, and it is nice for like when you want to shoot photos of things really far away. Yeah. Um, something that was really interesting that they talked in the keynote, they were like, iPhone is a very social camera, so we want it to hit these things. Mm-hmm. And I think by that they mean you take a lot of pictures of people and you take a lot of pictures of food and you take a lot of pictures of pets. Oh, and I think okay. that's what they're saying that most users... Only cats and dogs. 
Only cats and dogs, <laughs> not raccoons. <laughs> Dang uh, I think they were saying that's mostly what people use their phones for. And so 5X is like, is that still a social lens? I, I oh, feel like 5X is my kids doing something on the playground or playing soccer or something like that. That at, 5X sounds like a great oh. optical zoom or a great zoom level for like, I'm sitting in the stands of an event that's my kid is part yeah. of, or a, a, con- a school concert or something like yeah. that. The funny thing is all the examples that they showed for the 5X lens were like sports photography, <laughs> like people swimming really fast, people yeah, running really fast. They were. And they were like cropped way in. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It is interesting. I, I think ultimately we expect the 5X to come to the Pro next year. Yeah. I think that's like I think that'll the happen. classic thing that they do. But it, I think Samsung does a good job where they have, well, wide, they have ultra another wide, <laughs> wide, 3X and 10X. Yeah. So they're like, look, if you want 3X, we got you. But if you want deep zoom, we also got I'm you. I'm just really interested as if Apple is ever going to bring a fourth lens. It wouldn't make sense because the camera cutout's already square. Why not add another lens into it? Look. Like, I understand not wanting Apple not wanting to do the Samsung thing of like five and then have to put another lens yeah. under the already like silhouette they've made. Yeah. But the silhouette is there to have another camera. Well, it's right? funny because the, the idea of having four lenses on an iPhone feels really silly. But also, when the first three camera iPhone came out, we yeah. made all those memes about it being this, like mm-hmm. the, the fryer stove thing, top. the stovetop. Yeah. yeah. We used to have one. So, what's one more? We'll get used to it. But yeah. Um, battery life so far on the pros. On the max for me has been like kind of subpar for a max. It gets me barely over 24 hours, which is like cool, but the previous two maxes got me like almost three days. Yeah. So I feel like that A17 Pro is just generally using more power. This is something I think we're converging on because I've also tried to withhold judgment on battery until I'm at least a week in. So I'm eight days in now. And I have not had great days. I've had a lot of normal days and I've had a couple of bad days. Yeah. I have not had the normal couple of great days also. Yeah. So I am starting to think, yeah, it is A17 Pro being more power hungry and being able to drop faster. Standby time's still good. Standby time's really good. But it is more powerful chip that can eat power faster. Yeah. Like I went to bed at like 26%. I woke up and it was at 25%. You went to bed at 26%? Yeah. That's terrifying. And you didn't plug it in? No. On purpose. Oh, oh, on purpose. Okay. Testing. Oh, testing. Man. Testing. Testing. Is your phone your alarm? Uh, yeah. You are bold. That's bold. bold. Well, I also man. wake up naturally Anything like before my alarm. under 20%, I'm not going to risk that. <laughs> but 25, 26? <laughs> well, the standby right. time is good. So I went to bed with 26%, woke up at 25. So that was like, okay, I slept like six and a half, seven hours, and it yeah. dropped 1%. But then from the time that I woke up to the time that I got to work, which is like two and a half hours total, it had dropped to 10% battery. Yeah. And that was like me using it most of that time. But I'm on the pro right now. I just did a trip where it was on the wireless charger the entire time. It's 3 p.m. I'm at 44%. That's not as good as it usually is. That's not. Wait, it was on the wireless charger in your car? Yeah. Yeah. There and back? Yeah. And did you fill it up overnight? Yeah, I started with 100 today. Is that what you took video with? Yeah. So taking video is going to burn through. Like I like I said, you're yeah, burning it's a little tough. Fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know I'm burning through f- a little bit faster than normal, but I'm not yeah. having the great days where it's like, oh, I didn't do a bunch of video. I just had like a couple navigation things in the morning and then yeah. a normal day, and I end the day with 70%. Haven't mm-hmm. had that day yet. So yeah. that's something we'll keep an eye on. It's My like, Zen phone's still killing it. But I yeah, bet. Still, yeah, that man. thing I bet. rules. I love this thing so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to just like throw that shot in there. I'm really glad I can get through 24 hours. It's just that compared to the previous Pro Maxes that were getting me literally almost three days, Yeah. I think that the, the A17 Pro chip is just really power hungry while it's active. Yeah. So. That titanium looks so good. It too. does look pretty good. So good. Actually, that blue, it, like I would love the that blue. The blue's actually not bad. I really like it, but just like, yeah. That looks so good. The black looks really good. They killed it with the pro colors. This, this is the first year I didn't order a black phone. I ordered a titanium yeah. one. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I ordered a titanium 15 pro. Are you going to switch to matte titanium all, everything? <laughs> no. <laughs> New shirt, limited I'm shirt. I think I should <laughs> yeah. the max for battery, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll get there. A day of battery. Because I like the cement D-brand skin. It kind of looks like that. Anyway, okay, <laughs> on to uh, a couple other things. Apple also, we wanted to talk about back glass repairs getting cheaper because they mentioned in the keynote, they have yeah. like an actual line in the keynote where they, they said the word repairability on stage, which like never happens, but they really did it. <laughs> and they went and designed the chassis to have a more easily replaceable back glass. Uh, now we see those new back glass replacement prices. They've gone from five 
500, 550 bucks on iPhone 12, 13, turning 14 Pro Max down to 199 on 15 Pro Max. $300 price drop is like $500. I can't believe it was $550. It cost $500. You could get a Zen phone. <laughs> replace your back glass with a Zen phone. You could replace your back glass or get a Zen phone. I'd rather duct tape my phone shut. Which is what a lot of people yeah. do. <laughs> you see those things everywhere. You just put the case over it yeah. and never yeah. take it off again. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, would you rather spend 500 bucks or just put a case on put it? A case put on a case it. on it, for sure. Yeah. 100%, that's like I mean, a $13 fix. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, apparently the new chassis is easier to take the glass off the back and replace it. $200 is still pretty expensive for a Pro Max, but $350 less is a, a mm -hmm. crazy drop. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that's saying. If just before it was way too expensive. Yeah, it was. It was, it was. Definitely... Yep. Jeez. <laughs> but I'm glad to see some sort of improvement. It's like, it's one of those Apple things where you're like, still bad, but thank you for not as bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> just many Apple things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other thing we have is just, uh, remember how they announced new iCloud storage levels? Yeah. yeah. We got pricing for that. Six terabytes is twenty nine ninety nine a month, and twelve terabytes is sixty dollars a month. Did they talk about having family plans on the bigger? I did options? not see that yet. Okay, but to be honest, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't look that hard for it. Yeah, I was just mostly upset about here that like two terabytes is nine ninety nine a month. So that like I would assume if you are going to jump to twelve terabytes, they should give you somewhat of a discount. Like yeah. like. Yeah. $60 a month is so much. Make it $50 yeah. a month. This is the exact same as just paying for the two terabyte. Yeah. It's actually more like expensive. Multi By is three cents. <laughs> nine, oh, is it, oh, you're right. Nine ninety nine oh, yeah. times three is is twenty nine oh, you're ninety seven. Right. You're right. <laughs> and six terabytes is twenty nine. Oh, that's so funny. Wow. So it's actually more expensive to and buy then, the six terabyte? That's weird. Interesting. That's very funny. I'm just saying as someone who has basically no blood family but many different technical families <laughs> i would Sneaky. love to be in a family plan with this <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah. 12 terabytes. like people wondered if we held back anything we said at the apple event the only thing we did was david talking about his family in front <laughs> in front of them to Wait, see who his family was grandma's ashes at least. <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> hold on the six terabyte is 29.99 and then yeah it's the just... 12 terabyte is also Double, but more expensive because it's fifty nine ninety nine instead of fifty nine ninety. So what is that? Six cents more expensive. It's well than I'm the two terabyte. But if you just doubled oh. up the six terabyte and got two twenty nine ninety nines, that would supposed to be fifty nine ninety eight. But it's fifty nine <laughs> ninety nine. Come on, Apple. That Weird. extra cent, man. Very strange. Okay, well that's oh. out there. Yeah. I think that's about all we have for Apple stuff. Stay yes. tuned for the reviews. The reviews yeah. are in the works. We've got a lot to say about these phones and also the watch and the double tap underrated man i just do this all day now all day yeah and ellis yeah. started using an apple watch every no. day no i i i didn't <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. it's not true i started using it because i wanted to walkie talkie everyone it was we were, fun like, shooting stuff yeah that was because in ohio vin and brandon were walkie talking and i was like wow that's the most essential tool on a shoot and uh yeah so i wore it for the trip and then i got home and then now i'm still wearing it and Mm. It's crazy. How I that know. Happens. I've got this beautiful watch box in my apartment that now just goes unopened. It's, it's honestly a travesty. Yeah. Is the walkie-talkie an ecosystem feature? I think it kind is. of. I, th yeah. I believe so. I mean, yeah. I had to it's wear two other... watches at the event so that I could walkie-talkie. You can only walkie-talkie on an you Apple didn't Watch. You have to do anything. You chose to wear <laughs> no, two watches. No, it was epic because no, I was, it was not. I was slacking you guys, and you weren't replying, and I just go, Psh, "Adam, this is David over," <laughs> and he's like. Then you David should have just worn the you. one watch. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh, wait, you're not wearing your watch right now. I'm wearing my mm. Casio 1200 for the thousands of people that have asked me what this watch is. I was, I was a trying modified to... Casio 1200 with a steel case and some filters. Sick. All right, let's talk about this monitor company because you have this in the notes here. And I, I'm like familiar with, I think we saw the monitor and they made it. A laptop, of yeah, a it's a it was like a Surface, like a, yeah, uh, killer. Back yeah, in the day. it had like an Alcantara yeah. case. It was basically, yeah, it looked just like a Surface. Yeah, but what is going on with it's, them now? It's Eve, if you remember. It was from 2017, I believe. That's around when the tablet was out. Um, yeah, it was like a tablet, and it had that like Alcantara like yeah. keyboard with it. Um, we got the tablet. We never really did too much with it. Um, and then they started selling monitors. I don't want to go too deep into it, but um, Sean Hollister from The Verge, I think his name is, he just did like this incredible write-up about how Eve, which is now a company called 
Do, I believe. <laughs> D-O-U-G-H. Am I pronouncing that right? Right? Oh, yeah, like Do- Brett Doe. Doe might be the worst tech name I've ever heard. They're just like, we make your money. Doe. We take That's your what money. I say. Yeah. <laughs> we're stealing your dough. Yeah. yeah. Is how I... Yeah. But um, so they rebranded. They've had a bunch of monitors they've announced, but like didn't really ship. And now they're still releasing new ones, but still have old ones that aren't really shipping on the line. And there hasn't been a lot of refunds. And then they started a new refund pos- process, but... Those people aren't really getting refunds, but Sean has been covering it mm. for a long time, and he wrote this like really, really great Verge article that we'll list in the bio and in the show notes. And like, I highly suggest reading it. And if anyone out there has dealt with this company and maybe is having an issue with refunds, go read that article, and maybe you'll have a better chance of getting something back. But like, it feels really shady, especially for a company that apparently just buys panels from off the shelf. And you could probably get the same panels from any other reputable monitor company. So yeah, it's a thing. weird, yeah. weird spot. For Def- that. Definitely read it. It's long, but it's it's really well written. Is it yeah. just that they're stealing people's refunds? Like, what is happening? Well, they're not giving refunds, and then some of them are giving refund dates past when you could already like um, do a credit card, uh, like refund or chargeback. So like, it's just a lot of weird stuff of them promising that they're going to give money back, but not giving money back. And then also taking money and not shipping things and like still releasing new products and I trying see. to get away from it, but still being really shady. And it's because they're taking too long to ship the things people already bought. Yeah. Or just like not shipping them in mm. general or not. Yeah. Wasn't it, the tablet also, thing like an Indiegogo back in like 2000? I think that was like definitely 12 was. or something. That was like an OG like, like 10 years ago. Some sort of Kickstarter thing. And now they're just doing like pre-orders on their own site. But I think some of those, I think there was also. I remember the original Indiegogo for the tablet. Like it was supposed to be like 3X the specs of the Surface tablet. But it was like, it looked exactly the same. And it took like two years to come out or something. Hmm. Yeah, I remember we got that and then I swore they offered to send us the monitor and I forget if we said yes or no. I just don't remember ever hearing from them again. And then I I didn't know they renamed their company. I thought they just went. I don't know. They had a sick red and black logo though. So like definitely send them your money. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Dang. But yeah, it, it seems like I think everyone should read it just because it's a really good article. And especially if you've ever dealt with them before and are looking for money back, but way more importantly, our next article Yes. Microsoft Paint yes. is adding layers and transparency. Yes. This is so sick. This is the best thing that's happened in 2023. Um, story of the year. Yeah. It is. This is story of the year. So, I mean, layers are huge if you've anyone's ever used Photoshop. I yeah, hope yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, like, completely changes how Paint works because Paint was very much a, like, I do an action and that action is basically permanent now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then not only can you now use transparent PNGs and save as a transparent PNG, but it also has a tool that looks like it will eliminate the backgrounds and like l- cut a subject out Love and that. either save it as a transparent PNG or if you do it on a top layer, it'll show the layers underneath. Should I be making thumbnails? <laughs> do you guys know when Paint first came out? No. You want to guess? Oh, God. What version of Windows didn't have paint? Like Ninety four. Do you want to guess, Marquez? When did paint come out? When did paint come out? Ninety one. Are you nineteen eighty five? Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is a thirty seven year coming um, situation. Making, yeah. Somewhere out there, there's a paint diehard who's just like thirty eight years. This is the like best day of his life. No, yeah. or he's like, I hate this new update. It yeah. ruins my paint. It ruined just, everything I know. I want to note, do you remember when um, Microsoft thought that like augmented reality was going to be the future back in like 2017 or so? And then like HP and Compaq and Lenovo made those like Microsoft 3D like AR headsets. So then Microsoft updated paint to make it, they have a paint 3D now. Oh. That you can do like augmented reality paint in. Oh. And it's just very funny that that came out before transparent like, BSGs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually incredible. Uh, hey, priorities, man. They're yeah. leaner than you think. That's true. They're, they're well, think. maybe they were just too early because now the you know the uh, Vision Pro is all AR stuff. So true. We'll be making layers and paint and drawing things in midair. But yeah, yeah I think this is your new thumbnail. Oh wait, no, you use a, a, a Mac. That's probably gonna be kind of hard. We should make, we have to make a virtual machine. Yeah. (laughs) Just for having paint on my Mac. That's right. To make thumbnails. That's how you do it. That's what I'm going to do. It's a pro gamer move. Absolutely. We definitely have to have Tim use this, though, and make a thumbnail in paint, I think. I I don't mind that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
Uh, okay, last last thing before the break. Dolly 3 is about to come out. It just got announced. Um, oh, my God. Dolly is kind of the thing that started this whole AI, like, explosion in the public eye. I remember the week that we found out about Dolly 3, like, a couple Twitter posts. Mm-hmm. And it was do- when Dolly 2 had just come out. We were like, what? What is this generative AI? Like, what, mm-hmm. is, what is generative AI? What is, like, a large language model? Like, what is all this stuff? And it just, like, we just dove into learning about this stuff. That was and, when we had to, like, write up what we wanted and send to them. And they did the, like, yeah, the, like, the prompts, the for, prompts for it. And then yeah. we got a bunch of pictures from that. Like, yeah. that's how, now you can just, like, yeah. go do it whenever you want. So, at the time, Dolly 2 looked, like, incredible, right? Like, comparatively to what we had had before. Yeah. Compared to Dolly 1, compared to, like, anything. Because we had no idea that you could type in words and get a picture out of it. Um, so na- But now, the, all of this stuff's coming out. Mid-Journey is insane now. So, mm-hmm. Dolly 2 looks like child's play at this point. Um, but now Dolly 3 is coming out. And yeah. there's a lot of different stuff about Dolly 3 that makes it updated. Um, it's mu- It's got much better more art to work with so it's just better in general uh it can take it works with chat gpt so it's like embedded inside of chat gpt for chat gpt plus members and the funny thing is you ask for an image mm-hmm. but if your prompt is too simple chat gpt will expand your prompt to make it more complex okay. so that dolly is better at doing it because so it works AI better is, with more words yeah is better at using the ai tool than you yeah oh yeah because why do they even need me at this point I mean, <laughs> no, it's just oh. you just type in like you just sitting <laughs> there and words are just coming out. <laughs> you just open the program and it does it for you. yeah, yeah. eventually you're just going to open it up and just look at it and hit enter and it's yeah. gonna go i got you i yeah. got you uh it also understands context much better than before i think previously it had trouble with things like the idea of writing something so if you oh, did a, horrible a, at that a teddy bear riding a horse like oh, it didn't can it actually oh riding writing oh i think you said writing riding. Like, no. if you ask for a stop sign, it makes a stop sign, oh. but then it says, like, soap on the yeah. stop sign or something. Yeah. Like, you can't write anything. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Um, that would be interesting to find out. It's theoretically going to come out in early October, um, so I'm very excited to try it. And also, it, it allows artists to opt out of OpenAI using their art, which mm-hmm. I'm not really sure how where they're sourcing all the art from yeah. and how you're going to be able to, like, label your art as do not use yeah i could see it as like my account on deviant art yeah like like that i opt out of this and this is where my stuff's posted but that doesn't take away from where your stuff's already stolen on the internet and if it's pulling it from there so that still seems like a tough thing to do yeah i have no idea maybe there's i could see something in the future of like when you're creating something in the metadata it has a like i opt out of this being used for whatever but that's supposed to be a a thing that's that's a thing that's being built right now yeah is that a thing that's being built for I opt out or is that a thing that's being built for this is AI it's generated in art and in the metadata shows that it's made by AI? There's a versus... thing they're working on. Um, it's a whole consortium with a bunch of the camera manufacturers and like Adobe where within the metadata, there's an encrypted level in the metadata that changes every time you've made an alteration to the image it leaves a tag on when that alteration was made and what it was. And if it was created by AI, it will say AI generated as well. Mm. Yeah. So I believe so. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I think that's different though than from like, I make something and in the metadata, there's something where it's like, I'm opting out of this ever being like pulled from the internet. Like scraped. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think that's a thing anyone's, I don't think it's in the works, but that would be the best way for that to because I don't know how do you future. how do you retroactively remove your contributions That's the from thing. the train? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems like they already have it trained on something. How yeah. do I like remove what I already? Let's have let them opt out after we have trillions of yeah. images. It's just an awkward conversation because OpenAI is getting sued from like every direction right now from people being like, "I did not consent to you mm-hmm. using my stuff," mm-hmm. and now they're trying to be more proactive about it. But it's like the damage has kind of already been done, and now just saying like, "We will use your stuff unless you opt out." <laughs> is kind of strange so i don't know forgiveness not permission yeah um but no one forgives you no, <laughs> and all yeah uh currently they have no plans uh that have been laid out to the public as to have a free version of this which is interesting um kind of crazy because you know they just dropped uh dolly 2 they just dropped chat gpt and now everything is kind of starting to go behind a paywall 
um, which is interesting for a company that was originally nonprofit and is now a capped profit company. Yeah. Yeah. None of this somehow shocks me at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's think, kind of the natural progression of capitalism. Do you think we'll continue to see like the newer versions behind the paywall and then the version gets dropped out of the paywall into oh. like the free version? Oh, I don't idea. know. It's probably the easiest way they of doing it. They could do that, but I think that they're keeping I think they're keeping the public access at a like much lower tier just because of like AI regulation hasn't caught up okay. yet and they don't really know what they're That's doing. That's why with it's that not yet. all the money they want to make. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, um, chugging along. Chugging along. Pretty soon, Dolly will just make whole waveform episodes. That's true. It's really not that far off. <laughs> I'm excited. I said in the Dolly video, I was like, first it makes Can't pictures, wait to take a break. then it makes short animations, then it makes videos, then it makes YouTube videos, then it makes movies. It's just... yeah. We're just chugging along that path, like yeah. one rung of the ladder at a time. Slowly, we're getting. And it there. was less than a year ago that this came. The first one came out. Mm -hmm. Well, Dolly too, but yeah. Wow, isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, insane. Oh, like yeah. Tim with the new paint versus ChatGPT with Dolly. Man, Ellis <laughs> must be a huge AI fan because he just keeps putting thumbs up over there about all this talk. Thumbs down, <laughs> big thumbs down. Very sad. Cool. Do you guys see the Adobe thing with the Adobe stock thing? What is it? About how a bunch of artists were complaining that if you search their name on Adobe stock, it doesn't serve their profiles. It serves AI art generated to be in their nice. style, even though they all opted out of the wow. the training Ugh. thing. Ugh. Ugh. Thumbs down. That's the worst possible thing. <laughs> that is. Like just, uh, this wow. is the weird thing about AI is you can just kind of like dance around the, the stuff that they're blocking with like different semantics. Here's and... another one just to make you guys... Uh, with what's the phrase quiver in your britches or whatever um there's like a long-standing <laughs> agreement between spotify and all the major record labels that spotify isn't allowed to hold music copyrights because as soon as they hold the copyrights to music they can push those records before the record labels records and just not have to pay anyone royalties on music that they own right um uh, so, but if they just start generating AI music, they don't even need to copyright it. They can just not pay anyone, period. Oh, interesting. So there's like a huge incentive for them to like fill up their playlists with AI generated music. That, that is interesting. Because then, you know, they just keep all that monthly, uh, yeah, all the, those monthly fees. It makes me think like one day it's just going to start infiltrating my Spotify weekly. Like at this point, if you hang around TikTok or YouTube long enough or even Instagram long enough, you might, without even knowing it, stumble past an AI channel, an AI character. And you might not even know it's AI, but it's just another thing or a person in your feed, and you don't even realize it. The, AI, the VTuber, whatever. We've been AI for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it could be me. It could be you. But now it could be in your Spotify for you page, and you wouldn't even notice. Mm. Or maybe you will notice. Maybe it's horrible music. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll figure yeah, it out it eventually. Just... That's interesting. We yeah. should take an ad break before I get any more sad. We should we should take an ad break. That is a good idea, Andrew. But before we take an ad break, <laughs> we should do trivia. Uh, it's so much trivia. better. That's the normal trivia volume. And we're back to one. Oh, it was yeah. so here. loud at that whole campus. It was <laughs> it's so great. So, loud. so first well. question. <laughs> Dan McCabe led development on the graphics for something called Microsoft Chart which was a software that was eventually incorporated into Microsoft Excel. What other piece of famous Microsoft software did Dan McCabe help to create? It's a very famous name. At least I can I name, that name Microsoft times. softwares for this one. I can take a guess on this yeah, one. I'm Microsoft. Excited. That's how I'm treating this question. <laughs> name oh, and, a different uh, piece of Microsoft software. And also to the listeners and viewers, uh, there's a Microsoft event tomorrow at the time of recording. So we're not talking about that yeah. because it is tomorrow at the time of recording. But yeah, at the time of viewing, it Here, is Here, let's yesterday. insert what we Follow think might it. happen. Surface blah, 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 surface, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, Panos isn't here with us anymore. Blah, blah, blah. More Surface. New Zoom. Bing is pretty cool, right? Remember Bing?
This episode of Waveform is supported by Shopify. So if you're tinkering with an idea for a new business, whether it's the next selfie stick or your hot new take on an ergonomic keyboard or a must have gadget that's so secure we can't even talk about it yet, Shopify can help you get started on the right foot. So Shopify is a sales platform that you can use to start a new business or help grow your existing operation. Shopify makes it easy for mom and pop shops and thriving companies alike to connect with customers, keep track of marketing efforts and convert site visits to sales. It's all in one e-commerce platform pairs seamlessly with an in-person point of sale setup so you can keep track of brick and mortar and online sales all in one place. That's just one of the reasons brands like Brooklyn and, and Allbirds rely on Shopify. So see why millions of other brands use the platform to power sales, develop their brands, and make business simple. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash waveform. So go to shopify.com slash waveform to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash waveform. All right, welcome back. We have the Amazon event, the thrilling <laughs> Amazon event that still I'm confused about is if it's like private or public event because it's yeah. it's the live streamed, but there's is, no embargo. But the event is private, but the announcements are public. Okay, yeah, it was very weird. I was watching the stream today. Sure. You guys were shooting something, so you missed the beginning of it. Then you missed the rest of it. You caught some of the end of it, David. Yeah. Um, it's an Amazon event. It's like every other Amazon event where they announce a bunch guess of things. What they did. Go for it. We made a new home device and we put Alexa in it. Let's we made X in. and put Alexa in then it. Then we made another one and also put Alexa in it. Okay. I like to yeah, add to the clock and the toaster. That was fun years <laughs> yeah. ago. That was I fun. That. I don't think they did anything as a wild in this yeah. one. No they, Astrobot did too? they? No Astrobot. They too. did show a tile of Astrobot right from the start, and I was pumped. And wow. then they never mentioned our little buddy again. And Damn. by buddy, I mean little demon spawn that is like biting <laughs> my him. ankles all the time. I also feel like we're in in this tech niche. It's another one of those ones where we probably don't know as many people that use Alexa versus Google Assistant and yeah. Siri as home yeah. device things. Alexa is um, way more prevalent though with a lot of people. It is. A lot of people that I know that aren't as like techie, yeah. that's what their home For sure. home automation is, is Alexa. In, yeah. yeah. In 2020, according to The Verge, 25% of US households had at least one wow, Alexa device. really? Of all households, so not just households with smart That's crazy. That was it was just like yeah. any that, household. And that was 2020? That's, that's that was 2020. Jeez. So that did was like six months ago. Did, <laughs> did they have stats on compared to Google Assistant or Siri? One moment. Oh. Well, while you look at that, um, the the first thing they mentioned in this was the Echo, the Alexa Show 8. The main reason I'm bringing it up here is because the way they described it, I thought was a little confusing. Okay. And I want, I put a picture of it here and David and Marquez, you guys missed this part. Mm -hmm. I want you to describe what this looks like. This one right here? Yes. This to me looks like a small children's tablet. Oh, woof. Okay. You know, <laughs> like a seven That's inch. That's not how they describe Like it. a small, like a seven inch tablet with thick bezels because you're going to give it to your kid, but then it like has a stand on the back, which probably has a speaker in it. And mm -hmm. now it's on a kitchen table. And it's got a video call on it. So it most likely is like a Nest Home Hub, right? Something like that, yeah. They so really it, not try to hide this camera at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> so it is it is similar to like a Nest Home Hub. It's a it's an Alexa product that has a screen where you can do some stuff. And it does do some cool things. I'll mention that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But right off the bat, the way they described this was edge-to-edge -edge glass. <laughs> what? Oh, I hate when they do And that. I was like... Have you heard other people use that term before? We're yes. used to edge-to-edge -edge screens, which is what we anyone actually cares don't about. most things have edge to edge yeah, glass, I know, but, but the screen is just way smaller yes who cares if it's edge to edge glass when it's got this dummy thick bezel on the <laughs> side of it like <laughs> yeah this is something we've I, i've heard that before like it's edge to edge I, glass and then you look at it and you're like oh i see why you said it that way because it's not edge to edge screen mm. but the glass is corner to corner neat don't really care that, that really that. that made me mad yeah. i thought that was a very deceiving way of describing this especially because like these bezels are brutal and i'm not saying that the like nest home bezels are good those are pretty bad also yeah, pretty thick yeah. but like calling this edge to edge glass felt that's pretty funny dishonest yeah um one thing i did really like about this though is one of the features it has on it is when it's just being a smart display it has a sensor to tell how close you are to it which will actually change the ui of what's being displayed 
which I think is a neat feature. So like if you're far away, it's only going to show possibly one thing with very large text. And then the closer you get, the more things that will show up on the UI with smaller text because it knows you can see it. Better. That's kind of cool. Um, I think that's really neat. I wish my, I don't think my Nest Home Hub has that. No. But um, I think that's actually a really, really cool idea. Give it a week. <laughs> yeah. It also has like, they talked about generative AI and Alexa like, within this and then directly after this. And I know David has a lot to talk about it. Mostly from what I saw was like their examples were, hey, what's the score of my favorite football team? And it knew what their favorite football team was and well, that's told not, them the score. That's just context. Or con- no, no, no. It, they were like, Alexa, write me a poem. Were they, okay. Yeah, no, no. There was there was definitely like oh. generative. Or or they one of them had Alexa. He was like, I don't remember the exact context, but it was like, Alexa, I like broke my foot or something. I can't go to my friend's birthday. And he, yeah. Alexa was like, bet. And then he was like, write, write the text that says no go, no show. Mm. So yeah. definitely uh, generating something. It's they're they're hmm. updating with generative AI. I have many thoughts about this. Um Just shoot. Okay. So it'll be more interesting than the Amazon. <laughs> there, I have like 20 versions of a script that I've been writing ever since this AI stuff started happening because it keeps changing really fast. So I keep changing the <laughs> point of the video. Yeah. Uh, you but, first told me about that script like in literally, 2021. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the versions of that video was called Natural Language Computers. And it was a. it's sort of about how the way we interface with devices is going to become just a lot more just natural conversation. Mm-hmm. And this reminds me a lot of when uh, Adam and I were at Android Authority, like in like 2018 or 2017, 2018, and Google Assistant first came out. And one of our bosses thought you, he could just talk to it by going like, hey, gee, um... I left my uh, car at the store and I need to, g- how do I go get it? And it would just be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And at the time, for a very long period of time, you've had to use these keywords, these prompts that specifically it listened for so that it c- you had to know how to talk to the computer. Mm-hmm, exactly. But yeah. the big update that they're making now is that that's sort of starting to go away. You're able to just sort of talk about things in a more natural way, and it understands the context of what mm-hmm. you need and what you want, and it will trigger commands based on that. So it's not like they're hard, they're, they no longer really need to hard code in like these very specific commands that you're making. Yeah. It understands your context and it can like provide functions based on that. Yeah. And, and that's like a very nice futuristic way to interface with computers. A really good example that was the Amazon Fire Stick and how somebody was showing off how to start searching for a movie by like some more simple things that was like, I want a movie about sports. But then when it would bring up results, it was a, I want one that I don't have to pay for. I want one yeah, so, that I haven't seen yet. And then even yeah. more so, they could say like, me and my family really like video games too. Is there one that co- like coincides with sports and video games or stuff? And he was asking some like, pretty complicated things you would never expect to ask like just yeah. a google assistant or a simple especially and, not and it was siri God. especially yeah <laughs> yeah can you imagine yeah yeah i yeah i have like my i can attempt to make this sentence in real time my i'm ready thesis on accessible high end computing like star trek has always been this is like my anyone who's watched Star Trek has always realized like, oh, they have a lot of really good ideas in here. Even though they're not real, they have like a lot of things that actually turn out to be true eventually. Yeah. And that's why I don't think I can name all the planets. <laughs> <laughs> but also on that note, apparently the Echo Show 8 looks just like something from Star Trek. Ellis was very I amped about that. that. I yeah. can believe that. But like, you know, With the, the communicator, people like, you know, now we have we the have smartphones now. Yeah, we've, we've gotten a lot of things from Star Trek. And one of the things they always had was computer. Yeah. Like they just talked to the computer. Oh. And Which is why Amazon added it for the Echo. Yeah. You, you can say, hey, you can computer. Say, yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. yeah. But the idea at least was like, if you're watching this show, you're thinking, wouldn't it be nice if like I could just ask my computer to do things and it would understand me? And as of right now, or as of right before AI, you need, in order to tell a computer to do something, you need it to either learn the UI of the software or learn to code yeah. to be able to talk to the computer to do something. Yeah. And AI... Just, sh- just shifted that line. It's flipped it basically and moved it way, way closer to natural. So you can just tell it something. Yeah, and it can literally write code for you, talk to the computer for you, figure out what to do for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. 
And ideally, in the most ideal world, I think accessible computing for everyone is just natural language. That's yeah. the ideal like finish line, I think, yeah. for all this stuff. If you get frustrated at the fact that you need to learn how to code, think about how hard it is for computers to learn English. Much harder. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so it's fair. called a coding language because there's information coded within the language that you are using that is static, that does not change. Whereas natural language is contextual and changes over the generations. If I say, it's lit fam to my computer, you think it's gonna know what that means? <laughs> In Until, 1985, when they invented but the other Microsoft thing is, Paint, it didn't know what it's had lit no fam. Clue what that was. <laughs> Alexa, show me some lit ass movies right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got yeah. you fam, here's I what got you. I got you. <laughs> No, but that's also the other thing that I think about a lot is the the job of knowing how to code, that job has changed so much because then it's either like, do you become good at prompt engineering for AI or do you become good at writing code to make computers better understand yeah. humans' natural language? Until the computer can just write better code to do that. Oh, that's a lot. That's <laughs> it's a lot of layers that are all it's twisted recursive. together. It's recursive. Yeah, yeah it's a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot going on with regenerative AI and talking to a computer. Yeah. I just like it to get better. I actually think it's pretty exciting that we're actually finally seeing somebody adding conversational natural language processing mm -hmm. into a product that people actually use every day. Because I don't really think that a text box that we type into is going to be the end state. I think the end state just is talking. either ambient computing where things just happen based on your actions that you do every day or just natural language. The yeah. And I think it's like big that it's being able to understand way more loosely based language on people who might not be that tech because totally. all of us know our family has called us saying, what is wrong with this, this, this? And all of us have just Googled it because we know how to Google things better than they do. Because we're yeah. good at prompt engineering. Exactly. Yeah, we are good at literally yes. early prompt engineering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now yeah. everyone can do that or just yeah. not have to do that anymore, yeah. which means way less phone calls and tech support that all of us have to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That it seems, seems like the products yeah. themselves still get better in baby steps. Like totally. every time we get a 100%. new Google I.O. and they're like, we've been working on our natural language models and Sundar is like throwing all this stuff on stage. I'm expecting to be able to go home to my assistant <laughs> and be like, all right, open my shades, like open the garage door, order this on Amazon. And I, I still can't quite naturally do any of yeah. the things I want. But I still, once in a while, they'll do something like, oh, instead of saying, hey, assistant, stop my timer, I just say, stop. Yeah. And it knows Slow. because of context. Yeah. Oh, the alarm's going off. He said stop. All right, I'll stop it. Right. Like little by little, we creep towards more natural, but it's not like yeah. blitzing our way there. We just got to get there eventually. And the Amazon uh, demos they showed were not the most advanced. No. Like you just said it every year at Google I.O., like Sundar always shows off their most advanced version of what they have. And we get all hyped and we're like, yeah, we can go home and use that. And then what we have at home is like one, one trillionth of the power. Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously this is going to come out in baby steps. And we were actually talking earlier about how it's kind of bold of Amazon to do a live uh, keynote because a lot of people have started doing pre-recorded keynotes so that they can like skip oh, yeah. over the clunky like live demos and all that stuff that barely works. And apparently the Wi-Fi was hanging on this and <laughs> oh, no. all the stuff. So. It's also just like pre-recorded stuff they can redo takes. And yeah. I just like watching it just and I understand people are going to stumble over words. That's just natural. But we've seen so many pre-recorded events now that like seeing a live event perfect. like that again, it was just like, oh, this is just it's unfortunate. Humans. Yeah. It's yeah. Real humans. yeah, we're spoiled by the pre-recorded stuff. We need we need to go back to like Steve Jobs asking everyone to turn their Wi-Fi guess, off. Yeah. I know. The, the keynote. Google I.O. was live, though, I guess. And that went pretty yeah. smoothly this year. Yeah, that year went pretty for, smooth. Yeah. Good job. And Dave Burke was incredible at live demos. So yeah. maybe it's just... Apple's been spoiling us with yeah. pure It was pretty stuff. weird that we went in the Steve Jobs theater, all sat down, and then just watched a movie together That's for two hours. That's basically what we did. I mean, it's a theater. I guess I shouldn't be shocked. Yeah. It's a pretty good screen. But Tim yeah. Cook's just like, hello, in person, and then we watched a movie together for <laughs> yep. two hours. Did you see him That's like come out and like watch it with us? Oh, he did? Oh, I didn't know So didn't he know goes, that. so the, the way it's always set up, and we'll go to break in a second, I swear. But <laughs> they, have, they always have it set up where it's like in the bottom, in the front, there's a bunch of Apple employees and Apple people. And I think in the sides, there's also typically a bunch of Apple employees, people who work on campus. And then also some press is there. Mm. And so when you get to certain sections, like whenever you hear the the applause it's always the apple employees who are like yeah this is a clap worthy one guys make oh. sure you clap journalists we're just typing and like writing stuff down but like yeah. you hear the claps for things and apple employees who genuinely have no idea what the announcements will be sometimes clap at those things 
But yeah, the front row is always like Tim, Craig, mm -hmm. like Jaws, like all those guys. So I just remember him. He comes out on stage. He goes, good morning, five times. And then he goes, let's watch a movie together. And then he walks off stage. And I just remember his Apple Watch like glowing as he walks off stage. And then the movie starts, and I just see his hair like walking into the front row and sitting down in the front row. And I'm like, yeah, we're just watching a movie Sounds together. Sounds like a Pixar film. That's funny. Yeah. My favorite thing that they announced, which was very okay. small. Yeah. It was part of, um, I think just for like all the Alexa Echo products, um, the like smart speakers was having a motion sensor on it that can sense if somebody is in the room and how much activity there is in the room and being able to automatically control your lights based on that. Mo which I think is nice. Seems like something that should have existed for a long time. Yes. It has the like motion sensor built into the speaker. Right. So then when you enter a room, it can turn the lights on based on that. And then I don't remember if they explained what the the activity level thing was, but I guess dim lights change lights based on how much activity is going on. And that, that all sounds a little <laughs> way more confusing, <laughs> but I just would love my smart okay. speaker to turn my lights on when I come into a room. I feel like I've had this for a while. Do you have motions, separate motion sensors? Like a Philips Hue setup, you can get a motion sensor. You but can it's get a separate, a separate motion, motion sensor. Center. Right. This will just be similar to the thing. If if the Nest Hub Mini has been like yeah. analyzing your sleep, <laughs> I feel like it should be able to turn your turn lights on when you walk lights in. The on. Room. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because I can already ask it to turn the lights on. Like yeah. just know that I'm there. I feel like it's similar to this like walking up in the UI changing. Like but before when you're talking about timers too, like can it see me if a timer goes off and it sees someone walk into the room and like open the oven? Be like, oh, I can probably turn this off without. I feel like them. we're so close to that. My, we're close to I that. I have the Nest Hub where like it shows the clock usually, but when I walk up to it in the morning, it sees my face and it says, "Hey, Marquez," and shows me my stats for the day. It's so close to just being like, "All right, I can see what's going on in the room. Let me just handle things that I know should happen." Oh, no one's in the room anymore. Lights off. Yeah stuff like that yeah this Fitch. just seems like a privacy nightmare to me oh, well it sure. already is a privacy <laughs> nightmare and i get no sure. benefits <laughs> it's it's all there already and i don't get the benefits if you're just gonna watch me all the time yeah if give gonna, me some extra features if you're gonna watch me sleep turn my lights off if it's gonna be <laughs> yeah. a nightmare anyway let me get some convenience out of it, <laughs> yeah. for sure all right that's a great place to leave it off uh yeah. but before we take our break of course let's do one more trivia question <laughs> title of this episode amazon event my nightmare <laughs> <laughs> Make my nightmare helpful. Microsoft Paint was released. In what year? In 1985. Nice. It was released as a reaction to what software released by a competitor in 1984? And if you don't think you know the answer, 1984, the year might help. Really? <laughs> Why? I have an answer, but I know it's not right. But I know Ellis will like the answer. That was a good hint, Ellis. Uh, I'm proud of okay. you. Okay, I have an answer. Oh, Thanks. let me write this. Do you think it's right? It. I just don't want to forget it because you said that's. I'm just going. Why does 1984 it. help? That didn't help me at all. Orwell Software. Support for this show comes from Wix. So you've probably heard about Wix, right? The website builder with templates, designs, SEO tools, you name it. But have you heard of Wix Studio? It's their new end-to-end -end platform designed exclusively for agencies and professionals. So with Wix Studio, you have total creative freedom to deliver your most ambitious web visions while still smashing your deadline. You can create intuitively on Canvas with smart features like no-code animations, or you can take more control with custom CSS and backend coding. Plus, their most complex layouts can adapt to every screen size. From a centralized workplace, to on-canvas collaborating, to reusing assets across sites, the workflows just make sense. So Wix Studios can help make your ideas come to life. And with advanced native business solutions, from e-com to events, bookings, and more, you can cater to every industry. So this is just a glimpse of what's possible with Wix Studio. Find out more at wix.com studio. Welcome back, my friends. Today, and this part of the podcast, we're talking about Microsoft again, except a different arm of Microsoft, Xbox. Ah, Xbox. So if you haven't been aware, there has been this court case going on because Microsoft was trying to buy Activision and then everybody sued them um, because that would make them be owners of a large part of the gaming landscape. So they're in court currently fighting a lot of different people. Uh, but as part of this case, they had to basically bring forward some like internal documents and one of the people who brought one of the documents to the courthouse or uploaded it 
accidentally attached like way more pages than they meant to attach of internal documents. Oh no. So they ended up leaking like an, a huge roadmap for like a bunch of their games and products that they had no intention of letting people know about. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. It was very funny. Uh, they thought the FTC leaked it and they blamed them. And then the FTC was like, Elman, oh no, it was you. They tweeted like the head of the FTC or whatever had to <laughs> really? tweet that like, this was on you guys. This ain't us. Sorry, bro. Yeah. So they, there was a lot of like pretty weird stuff. Like they had mapped out that Elder Scrolls six was not going to be on PlayStation. Which w- if they if the Activision deal went through. oh yeah it was I like, missed that stuff. it was like okay. weird it was like it's gonna be on PC and Xbox but not PlayStation like which specifically like, said not PlayStation yeah it nice. had like nice. it had like these like green checks if it was going to be on that platform and a red X if it wasn't Oof. and that was mapped for the roadmap and it was like bro their whole defense was that they were not going to make the gaming industry worse and that's yeah. direct <laughs> so evidence behind their back is a roadmap of how they will do exactly that yeah oh okay great um so another part of that is they are releasing a new series x refresh which is cylindrical and looks like a router it's, it's, not a box it's exactly anymore. like a router yeah oh actually kind of yeah that's purifier. my air purifier yeah. yeah wait it's not a box it's not a box i know it's not an x box it's, it's the x, x- I nope. didn't even <laughs> think of that. You can't call it that. That name's taken. You can't call it that. YouTube Red? <laughs> All right, we're cutting that. You can't call it that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That was, that was actually... <laughs> In real time, realizing even... you can't say that. That was hilarious. Intro clip, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a box um, anymore. That's... Yeah, so now it's this like cylindrical thing. Which is yeah. strange. Um, they say it's beautiful in a new design. It has, m- has t- up to two terabytes of storage. Wait, they didn't say beautiful. They said it's adorably it says, all digital. It says beautiful and innovative. Oh, does it? Oh, but adorably all digital. All I hate. I, I, we can talk about that later. What a so you don't need a you don't need it to be a box anymore because you don't need the disc slot. So you can make it whatever yeah. shape you want. So of course the box is now a circle. It's cool. like pretty completely redesigned. They have a USB C port for power delivery in the front, um, oh, up to cool. two terabytes of storage, and a brand new controller that is like completely different it looks real the controller looks nice i mean the yeah. the the whole it's a refresh um it's like two ter. i can't tell if it's two terabytes of storage or up to two terabytes of storage it um, says two terabytes of storage on the image uh, keep in mind this is all like exact this this stuff that they made internally a little bit ago so it could it is subject yeah. to change it's part of like a giant presentation that has some stuff we'll talk about later as well but wi-fi 6e um no, like we said, no disk drive, uh, two terabytes of storage, five hundred dollars, some reduced PSU power usage. Um, I hate that it says adorably all digital. <laughs> it's like, just say it's all digital. You don't need to try and like gaslight me into thinking yeah. that the digital like, part is, is like good is for me. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, it grew up. Claire, that, right? look how adorable my all digital Xbox Expansion. is. Yeah. Um, but yeah. th- that was kind of weird. The the new controller looks kind of cool. It has like raised to wake, so people are wondering if it has different types of like sensors yes yeah, like, like gyros are in it sensors. so that looks cool i also just want to throw out there i like the xbox controller better than the playstation controller yes oh, yeah. <laughs> no. no i dude. knew that would be a hot a hot topic the xbox but... controller kind of became like the de facto controller like when logitech makes like a 15 dollar yeah. cheap controller it's modeled after the xbox yeah controller. and anytime you see a pc game being played on something else they always plug in an xbox controller it's well, weird the Rocket League scene Microsoft seems pretty split when I watch Windows. Rocket League streamers. Um, yeah. True. Yeah. True. I guess Microsoft but that's does make Ro- it a little easier. Yeah. But <laughs> Rocket I, League did get big on PlayStation, though. Yeah, but oh, there like, are a lot of PC players that use uh, PS5 controllers. Well, wasn't the, the demo of like playing games in the Tesla screen, wasn't that an <clears throat> Xbox controller? Yeah. Like, anytime I see a demo like that, it seems like it's always an Xbox controller. I will say I like the Xbox controller's ergonomics. Yes. Yeah. That's better, what I like better. And I wish I could combine them with the PlayStation's layout. The yeah. Wait, what? The PlayStation controller is thinner and has worse ergonomics, but I wish I could take oh. that and put it and map it out onto I the feel Xbox. Like the Xbox layout I like ergonomically better than I like the size Alice, of it. I knew the we size were best friends. It. Gamers <laughs> rise up. You guys are both wrong for a reason. It's fine. <laughs> no, I mean the PS5 controller is the fantastic PS5 and I understand it yeah. is better than an Xbox controller, but ergonomically I like the Xbox controller better. I think and mm-hmm. someone who's an actual like Windows engineer can probably explain this to me on Twitter better than I can, but I think both the Xbox controller and Kinect have like 
class compliant e drivers baked into Windows because yeah. I have lots of third party software on my computer um, that was written originally for Windows that will plug into both of those pieces of hardware like seamlessly. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I like something tells me that these devs are not going out of their way. There's to, like, like a controller driver exactly inside yeah. of Windows and it like its default state is like an Xbox controller. I, yeah, effectively. Yes. That's yeah. why Logitech like makes all their controllers look like an Xbox controller because the, they but map the, the buttons and the driver map uh, exactly the same. Makes sense. I always whenever I was playing a dolphin emulator um, on my computer, it was always mapped to that. If we totally want legally, we, we could get a connect and a PC and we could control all the lights <laughs> in this room with oh, connect. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wait, are we just skipping that? Wait, what? Skipping what? what? <laughs> <laughs> no Did you hear that? The you heard that? I, yeah, wait. What? <laughs> wait, guys. You don't know about Dolphin Emulator? Oh, guys. Sorry. The, emu wait. the emulator is called Dolphin. Yeah. Uh, it's the most popular emulator. You have oh, to understand how Hold on. that was very confusing to me. <laughs> but that's still how I saw it, and I didn't think it. Really? There is wait, goats. you guys said he was emulating a dolphin? There's goat. <laughs> That's wack. Oh my god. You've never heard of Goat Simulator? No, I have yeah, no this, like, is, oh. this is a GameCube emulator called Dolphin. Well well I'm that's I'm just not surprised by if it was a game he where he was a dolphin. Dolphin is like one of the most popular emulators. I think if we can rewind, you yeah. said whenever I play Dolphin Emulator. Whenever I was playing a dolphin emulator. Oh. <laughs> which in my head I immediately pictured you playing dude dolphin in college, emulator in college i played dolphin simulator i'm right there <laughs> so with you. much i did yeah. play truck simulator so i can't even talk i also want to say that i've never used a ps5 controller but it actually looks very nice you should oh, you the should haptics try. are crazy really the trigger the like adaptive trigger or whatever it's called <gasps> is fantastic just play astro's playroom adaptive yeah. adaptive the uh the Does triggers the, the feedback gets get different amounts of feedback based like pressure, on pressure what yeah. you're doing Ooh. so like there's a game oh the bow and arrow thing yeah the bow mm -hmm. and arrow thing so the more you squeeze the trigger the you feel like you're press. pulling it taut and then Whoa. you like shoot it and it like releases what? the pressure it's and it's fast wow. it's good i'm such a boomer yeah that, that controller is really good damn this is awesome yeah okay well, maybe they're better than Xbox then. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> there, it is. there it is. In this presentation, we didn't just get to see the next refresh. We got yeah. to see no a couple way. years down the road, Theoretical, potentially, too. Really? Yeah. I guess the presentation, though, is kind of old. So this is like their roadmap into the future. But they had a 2028 section yeah. that mentioned a couple ideas. And there's a bunch of different stuff in here, but it essentially comes down to it seems like they're trying to make some sort of handheld device that's cloud hybrid that is using cloud-based systems to be able to power a cheaper device to play mobile games for under $100. Uh, yeah. Right? For what year? 2028, I believe it said. That's a long time Dang. away. That's what I was saying. It Five like, years? Who, who knows if we're going to be doing that in 2028? <laughs> Because we're barely doing it now. I'm wondering if it's yeah. because if the presentation was older <laughs> and like they were road mapping oh. too far ahead, or it did seem like there were some things that had to do with um like what components <clears throat> they could get properly for it. Yeah. Because we are seeing stuff like that now, but we're also not seeing like fantastic versions of that right now. Yeah. Um Yeah, I mean it kind of looks like this is like a wish list, right? Because it's like next yeah. gen ray tracing. Dy dynamic yeah. global illumination. It's kind of just like, this is the stuff that we hope that we'll have at that point. Yeah, Improved um, processing. Yeah. I also want to note that the the Xbox head guy, Phil Spence. Spence, Spencer, Spencer yeah. he like came out and was like, this is an old deck. Things have changed. We are excited to announce the actual products when we're ready to announce them. That's, yeah. So well, that's just like, you know. One way we can that. kind of tell how this, how old that was or how accurate it was is it did say that this xbox series s x refresh is like last week of october or yeah. like right well, before november out, though. well i'm just saying if it does come out then then, then we know it's if accurate. it's a little more accurate than what he's trying to play it up that's to be. true um yeah. but still 2028 even if it was accurate now who knows what actually yeah. comes out there i don't um, think you can map five years ahead of time and know what's gonna happen yeah yeah it's gonna be some new trend they're gonna be five years late too yeah Interesting. Like dynamic so, yeah, But this is a huge leak, and I just also thought it was hilarious that the FTC had to say, like, the, David, we didn't do this. You need to stop triggering everyone mentioning ray tracing. Sorry. I Yeah. I also want to... <laughs> <laughs> We I want to make it Bro, yeah, who knows if NVIDIA is going to invent a new ray tracing? 
I misspoke last week on the podcast. And our I'm, tech I'm audience. sorry to everyone. I did I did watch it back and I did say invented. Oh, did you? I what didn't I, take it as that. What I it. meant when I said that was that they brought it to like consumer products for like the like gaming products. It They're brought the ray it, tracing people. It brought it into mainstream for sure. Like yeah. we were talking about ray tracing. I still a lot of people were talking about ray tracing. It was around before. <laughs> <laughs> I still should, I still should not have said invented. Um, so I'm sorry to the people that I offended. But <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was that they brought it to like a more consumer audience. No, you're canceled. Anyway, that's it. I don't know, yeah. Well, this is also David's last sorry. episode. Sounds so. like he's more sorry that he got caught than yeah. sorry for what he did. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Don't worry, we've taken away his paycheck from last <laughs> month. It's, we've yeah. punished him correctly for yeah. this. Y'all are savage. No, we've issued our, our correction. Everyone's on the same page now. We're all good. Yeah. Also, if anyone wants like way more information about this, there are a lot of other people that do way more console stuff that we yeah, do and know more. Sure. So like Judner, your average consumer, yeah. Austin Evans, I'm sure are all over this right now with way more information. I bet I, Austin already has one. I'm <laughs> probably. I think I found this from Austin posting that this is like the biggest Xbox leak he's ever seen. Yeah. So Oh, wow. go check out those channels if you want way more information on consoles. Um, yeah. But we had to talk about it a little bit. It's and I just wanted to about, say I like the controller. Yeah. It's fun to talk about with the asterisks that I don't really play any video games at all. So except for Dota 2. And this dolphin. And dolphin. <laughs> and dolphin and simulator. And, simulator. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will head into trivia. I wrote, down my, I wrote down the second answer. I need to hide it while I show you my first answer. <laughs> so, I forget the quick question. recap on the points. Marquez, do we have to do this every week? Yes. <laughs> Marquez with nine. Andrew with one, two, kind of the one, five. Five? That's not as bad as it used to be. No. <laughs> David with nine. Okay. So, David and Marquez are tied with nine. Wow. Dan McCabe. Yeah. He created something called Microsoft Chart, which was a software that was eventually incorporated into Microsoft Excel. What other piece of famous Microsoft software did he help create? He is a famous guy. Like, he I is. know that name. Yeah, same. It, like, tickled my brain. Oh, gosh. Famous Microsoft software. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Or is it an... I almost want to say infamous Microsoft software. Infamous? Ooh, That's there's tough, a hint. Uh, I <laughs> wait. He. he I'm gonna be so mad if this is what it is, but or if and it's not what I wrote. Time. Okay. Flip them and read. What do you guys got? Uh, I hope you're wrong, Marquez, because that's the other thing oh, I wanted to say. And then he right. said infamous, and now I'm Marquez is probably right. Say I it. I uh, I wrote Clippy. Okay. Oh. Nope. I wrote PowerPoint. Hmm. Nope. I wrote PowerShell. Nope. Okay. Whoa. What is that? Infamous. The answer? Why do I know his name so well? Microsoft Paint. Is that wait, really what it was? Wait, I thought you said he made Microsoft Paint. No, he, he made, made Microsoft a... Chart. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my god. Well done. <laughs> Great. An Ugh. Yeah. How proud are you that none of us got I'm that? I'm so proud. We wow. got so proud. This is my moment. This is the same Alice thing. is so disappointed in us. I'm this sorry. This is the same thing where you're like so what do you eat steak with? A fork. What do you eat <laughs> salad with? A fork. What do you eat macaroni with? A fork. What do you eat soup with? A fork. <laughs> I don't <laughs> use it with a fork. I use it with a spoon. It's like the same thing. Yeah, we've been talking I about paint for so long. I literally thought your question was he wrote paint. What else did he make? Well, he did do paint. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. You're right. You're yeah. crazy. I asked Adam, I was like, do you want I me to change my trivia question? Because since mine's like about paint, I kind of like throws yours off he was like nah we're good <laughs> you're good because these idiots aren't gonna catch on <laughs> i'm just glad none of us got it <laughs> i'm <All> right. not <laughs> microsoft paint released 1985 as a reaction to what software which came out in january of 1984 why does this have to do with george orwell you're, you're not thinking techy enough oh apple <gasps> oh wait <gasps> <laughs> All right, close button. <laughs> Get the button gun. Uh, what is the Apple version of paint called? Who cares? Flip them and read. <laughs> <laughs> what did you write? Kid picks. <laughs> what is that? 
I don't know. It was an old like drawing software on Apple, right? Oh man, I hope that's so. a good guess, right? It's oh great, wow, it's a great yeah. guess. It's okay, wrong, wait, but... can you please explain it better? KidPix is this really fun uh, art software for kids that was like a big part of my childhood. It has like a great sound effects package. It's like super entertaining to use if you're a kid. Um, K i d p i x KidPix. I'm sure if Horrible like SEO. I'm sure if you. God, <laughs> now it has an X. It's okay. Anyway, I wrote Apple. But Apple software. Yeah. I wrote Apple Paint, which doesn't exist, right? It, Unless it does. Oh. It is Apple, but is the it? software is called Mac Paint. Oh, which does Marquez, Apple Paint count? I, oh. Does Apple Paint count? Yeah, we should count. Mac That's Paint. Marquez, I thought you used Mac Paint in the Dope Tech episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did. Nice. Yeah, I definitely. That's the only time I've ever used Mac Paint, but I definitely I've never did. used it. I wrote Apple Paint. Yeah. Uh, my assistant, my <laughs> lovely that producer, paint. is telling me that that <laughs> that's what he said out of my mouth. Unfortunate. Unfortunately. All right. But if I get a quickly. bunch of angry messages on Twitter, that that no, question that was count. not clear. That shouldn't count. Don't message him on Twitter. That's y'all. I should have heard the question. Yeah, hara- <laughs> bully him on. You know Twitter. what's crazy? <laughs> that first question with the with the paint thing. I, my first thought when you said it was, oh, obviously paint because we're talking about paint right now. And then the second time you asked it, I thought the question was, who else? Who wrote paint? What else did he make? Yeah. When I first wrote I, the question, I was totally originally going to be like, so we were just talking about Microsoft Paint and then ask you guys the question. Oh, but I thought that was really tricky. Evil, yeah, dude. that would have been too much. That's, that's really evil. That's have. crazy. Well, it, was still, we it, well, it still works. It still, yeah, yeah. It still it's works. Still too so. much. Well, right. zero points across the board for everyone this trivia round. That's okay, though. It's going to happen sometimes. We're yeah. going to get some right next time. That's the way it goes. Mm, I wish. <laughs> wow, I hope. <laughs> Either way, this has been a fun episode. Stay tuned for the videos we talked about that are in the works, of course, on the other channels, but also go free free to watch the other stuff that we've already made. Check out the links in the show notes. We've got articles, we've got videos, all kinds of good stuff. Until the next one, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Catch you in the next one. Peace. Waveform was produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. We're partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music was created by Vean Sill. Nice yes, jet sir. noises. That yeah. was an interesting sound. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> 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 <laughs>